the grandeur of the Roman Empire has fascinated historians and the general public alike for centuries. Spanning vast territories across Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, the empire was a marvel of engineering, military prowess, and cultural integration. But was the Roman Empire simply too big to sustain itself? Why were so many emperors assassinated by their own troops? Why did the Western Roman Empire ultimately fall in 476 AD at the hands of Odoacer? While many historians debate the precise reasons for Rome's fall, arguing that the decay of republican ideals and institutions or the newly forming Roman Catholic Church played significant roles, as did Eastern Rome's decimation of Italy by Emperor Justinian in 535, fewer asked the fundamental question, was the Roman Empire sustainable? In this exploration, we will delve into eight key reasons why the Roman Empire was not sustainable. These reasons span from the sheer size and complexity of the empire to the military overextension, economic strain, political instability, social and cultural decline, external pressures, environmental and health issues, and religious transformations that collectively undermined Rome's ability to maintain its dominance. Through this detailed analysis, we aim to provide a comprehensive understanding of the multifaceted challenges that led to the decline of one of history's greatest empires. In future episodes, we will explore why Rome was divided into Eastern and Western empires and argue how, with strategic adjustments, the Roman Empire or any nation could potentially avoid the fate of Rome. Join us on this journey to uncover the lessons of Rome's rise and fall and their implications for modern states, including America today. The Roman Empire at its height was a sprawling behemoth stretching from the windswept moors of Britain to the sunbaked deserts of Egypt, from the icy reaches of Germania to the warm shores of the Mediterranean. This vastness, while a testament to Roman ambition and military prowess, also planted the seeds of its own demise. Imagine trying to manage a territory that encompasses multiple modern countries, each with its own distinct cultures, languages, and local politics. The Roman Empire faced exactly this challenge. That is not to say that there wasn't a Roman Empire culture and many were proud to be part of the empire, read their Marcus Aurelius or speak their Latin. But it was one of many cultures that permeated the further from Rome one went, as the empire expanded, the centralized government in Rome struggled to maintain effective control over distant provinces. Communication across the empire could take weeks, even months, leading to delayed decisions and a lack of real-time information. This often meant that by the time an imperial decree reached a distant province, the situation on the ground had already changed. To address these challenges, the Romans developed an intricate bureaucracy, with layers of officials responsible for various aspects of governance. While this system worked to some extent, it was also prone to corruption and inefficiency. Local governors and officials often acted in their own interests rather than those of the empire, further complicating the administration. The logistics of maintaining such a vast empire were staggering. The Roman road network, famous for its engineering marvels, was a crucial asset, but even it had limitations. Transporting troops, supplies, and information across thousands of miles was a monumental task. During times of war or rebellion, reinforcing distant provinces quickly was nearly impossible. The Roman legions, although formidable, were often spread thin, making it difficult to respond effectively to multiple threats at once. The empire's diversity was both a strength and a weakness. On one hand, the incorporation of different peoples brought new ideas, technologies, and cultures into the Roman fold. On the other hand, integrating these diverse populations was a continuous challenge. The Roman policy of Romanization aimed to assimilate conquered peoples by spreading Roman culture, language, and customs. While this policy met with some success, in many regions, local identities and traditions remained strong, creating friction and resistance. The administration also had to deal with various legal systems and local customs. Laws and decrees issued in Rome often had to be adapted to fit local context, leading to a patchwork of legal standards across the empire. This inconsistency undermined the rule of law and made governance even more challenging. The frontiers of the Roman Empire were constantly under pressure. The northern borders, along the Rhine and Danube rivers, were particularly vulnerable to invasions by Germanic tribes. In the east, the Parthian and later the Sasanian empires posed a significant threat. Defending these extensive borders required a massive and sustained military effort. The construction of fortifications like Hadrian's Wall in Britain and the Limes border fortifications along the Rhine and Danube were attempts to manage these threats, but they also highlighted the immense resources required for defense. The sheer size and complexity of the Roman Empire made it incredibly difficult to manage effectively at the time without the modern advances we have today in technology, engineering, and aviation. 
administrative challenges, logistical issues, diverse populations, and the constant pressure on the frontiers stretched the resources and capabilities of the Roman state to their limits. While the empire's vastness was a symbol of its power, it also contributed significantly to its eventual downfall. In the next part, we will delve into the issue of military overextension, another critical factor in the decline of the Roman Empire. Maintaining such a vast military force placed a heavy burden on the Roman economy. The costs of equipping, feeding, and paying the soldiers were immense. To meet these demands, the Empire imposed heavy taxes on its citizens and extracted resources from its provinces. This economic strain had a ripple effect, stifling economic growth and leading to discontent among the populace. The debasement of the currency, a tactic used to fund the military, led to inflation and further economic instability. As the value of money decreased, the cost of maintaining the military increased, creating a vicious cycle of economic decline. The financial pressures on the empire became increasingly unsustainable, contributing to its eventual downfall. The Roman strategy of continuous expansion ultimately proved unsustainable. Each new conquest required more resources to defend and administer, stretching the empire's capabilities to their limits. The focus on expansion also diverted attention from internal stability and economic development. The result was an empire that was impressive in its reach but increasingly vulnerable to internal and external threats. In summary, the overextension of the Roman military was a significant factor in the empire's decline. The constant state of warfare, the challenges of frontier defense, recruitment issues, economic burdens, and strategic overreach all contributed to a weakened state. While the military was the backbone of the Roman Empire's power, its overextension eventually led to systemic vulnerabilities. In the next part, we will explore the economic strain that further undermined the sustainability of the Roman Empire. The decline in trade had a ripple effect throughout the economy. Cities that had thrived on trade and commerce began to decline, and local economies suffered. The reduction in trade also meant less revenue from customs duties, further straining the empire's finances. Agriculture was the backbone of the Roman economy, providing food for the population and raw materials for trade. However, the agricultural sector faced several challenges that contributed to economic strain, over-reliance on slave labor, soil depletion, and changing climatic conditions led to reduced agricultural productivity. Large estates, owned by the elite, often focused on cash crops for export rather than staple foods, leading to food shortages and increased prices. The decline in agricultural output reduced the empire's ability to sustain its population and military, contributing to overall economic decline. As the economy weakened, many cities experienced decline. Urban centers that had once been hubs of economic activity and cultural life saw their populations shrink and their infrastructures deteriorate. Public buildings fell into disrepair, and services declined. The urban decline reflected and exacerbated the broader economic challenges facing the empire. The Roman Empire faced profound economic strain due to heavy taxation, inflation, economic inequality, dependence on slave labor, declining trade, agricultural challenges, and urban decay. These factors, interwoven and mutually reinforcing, created an economic environment that was increasingly unsustainable. The economic strain undermined the stability of the empire, contributing significantly to its eventual collapse. In the next part, we will examine the political instability and corruption that further weakened the Roman state. The Eastern Roman Empire, later known as the Byzantine Empire, managed to survive for centuries after the fall of the Western Empire, but the initial division weakened the overall coherence of Roman authority. The Western Empire in particular, suffered from political fragmentation and lacked the resources and stability to fend off external threats effectively. Political instability and corruption led to widespread discontent among the Roman populace. Heavy taxation, judicial corruption, and administrative inefficiency eroded the public's faith in the government. This discontent often manifested in riots, rebellions, and support for usurpers who promised reforms. The loss of civic virtue and the decline in public participation in governance further weakened the state. The traditional Roman values of duty, service, and sacrifice for the common good were increasingly replaced by self-interest and apathy. This decline in civic engagement made it difficult to mobilize the population in defense of the state or for collective action. Political instability and corruption were significant factors in the decline of the Roman Empire. The lack of a clear succession system, military interference in politics, rampant corruption, bureaucratic inefficiency, political fragmentation, and popular discontent all undermined the effectiveness of the government. These issues created a fragile political environment that was unable to cope with the mounting internal and external pressures facing the empire. 
In the next part, we will explore the social and cultural decline that further contributed to the fall of Rome. The decline in education had long-term implications for the empire. It reduced the pool of knowledgeable and skilled individuals who could contribute to governance, administration, and cultural life. The loss of intellectual vitality further weakened the empire's ability to innovate and adapt to changing circumstances. The moral and ethical standards of Roman society also declined over time. Corruption, decadence, and the pursuit of personal pleasure became increasingly prevalent, particularly among the elite. The moral decay of the ruling classes set a negative example for the rest of society, leading to a general decline in ethical behavior. The Roman Republic, founded on principles of checks and balances, gradually gave way to authoritarian rule under emperors who concentrated power in their hands. The Senate, once a deliberative body representing the interests of Roman citizens, became increasingly ceremonial under imperial rule. The erosion of republican institutions diminished avenues for political participation and accountability, fostering disillusionment among the populace. As imperial authority expanded, local governance lost autonomy, further alienating communities from the central administration. The breakdown of civic institutions and the erosion of legal norms undermined the rule of law, contributing to social unrest and political instability. The absence of effective mechanisms to address grievances and ensure equitable distribution of resources exacerbated tensions within Roman society. Public spectacles, such as gladiatorial games and chariot races, became increasingly brutal and extravagant, reflecting the society's appetite for violence and excess. These spectacles, while popular, also diverted attention from more pressing societal issues and contributed to the overall moral decline. The social and cultural decline of the Roman Empire was a significant factor in its eventual fall. The erosion of civic virtue, widening social inequality, urban decline, loss of traditional values, decrease in education and intellectual life, and moral decay all weakened the societal fabric that had once made the empire strong. These issues, combined with the political, economic, and military challenges, created an environment that was increasingly unsustainable. In the next part, we will examine the external pressures that further strained the Roman Empire and hastened its decline. For example, the settlement of the Visigoths within the Empire's borders initially aimed to create a buffer zone against other barbarian groups. However, the mistreatment and neglect of the Visigoths led to their rebellion and subsequent sack of Rome. Diplomatic failures and the inability to manage alliances effectively contributed to the Empire's decline. The Roman Empire's expansive territory made it difficult to defend against multiple threats simultaneously. The strategic overreach stretched the military thin, making it challenging to respond quickly and effectively to invasions and rebellions. The vast distances and diverse terrains further complicated logistical support and troop movements. The division of the empire into the Western and Eastern Roman empires in 285 CE was an attempt to address these strategic challenges. While the Eastern empire managed to survive and even thrive for several more centuries, the Western Empire continued to face insurmountable external pressures and ultimately fell in 476 CE. Or did it? Watch when did the Roman Empire really fall? Out now. The Roman Empire faced relentless external pressures from barbarian invasions, the Sasanian Empire, and internal rebellions. These threats, combined with economic and social impacts, diplomatic failures, and strategic overreach, significantly contributed to the decline of the Empire in the next part, we will examine the environmental and health issues that further undermine the sustainability of the Roman Empire. The eruption of Vesuvius, which destroyed the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, had far-reaching impacts on the Roman Empire. The immediate destruction resulted in the loss of thousands of lives and the obliteration of two thriving cities. The economic impact was significant, as Pompeii was an important commercial center with bustling markets and trade networks. The loss of these cities disrupted local economies and trade routes, leading to economic instability in the affected regions. The ash and debris from the eruption also had longer-term environmental effects. Agricultural land in the surrounding areas was covered in volcanic ash, rendering it unusable for years. This led to a decline in agricultural productivity and further exacerbated food shortages. The displacement of survivors and the need to rebuild infrastructure put additional strain on the empire's resources. Furthermore, the psychological impact of the eruption was profound. The sudden and violent destruction served as a stark reminder of the power of nature and the vulnerability of human settlements. It likely contributed to a sense of insecurity and instability among the population, already dealing with other environmental and health challenges. The cumulative impact of environmental and health issues on the Roman Empire was profound. Climate change, soil degradation, epidemics, public health challenges, 
and natural disasters all contributed to a persistent state of crisis that weakened the empire's ability to sustain itself, the resulting food shortages, population decline, economic disruption, and social unrest created a vicious cycle of instability and vulnerability. The environmental and health issues that plagued the Roman Empire played a crucial role in its decline. These factors, often operating in tandem with political, military, and economic pressures, created an environment of continuous crisis that the empire struggled to overcome. In the next part, we will explore the religious transformation of the Roman Empire and its impact on the empire's cohesion and stability. The religious transformation of the Roman Empire was a profound and multifaceted process that had significant implications for its cohesion and stability. The shift from a polytheistic society to one dominated by Christianity fundamentally altered the social, political, and cultural landscape of the empire. This transformation was marked by conflicts, reforms, and a redefinition of Roman identity, all of which played a role in the empire's decline. Christianity began as a small, persecuted sect within the Roman Empire but eventually grew to become its dominant religion. The spread of Christianity was facilitated by various factors, including the Pax Romana, which allowed for relatively safe travel and communication across the empire, and the universal appeal of its message of salvation and eternal life. The early Christians faced periods of intense persecution, particularly under emperors like Nero and Diocletian, who viewed the new religion as a threat to traditional Roman values and the authority of the state. Despite these persecutions, Christianity continued to grow, attracting converts from all social classes. The reign of Emperor Constantine, 306 to 337 CE, marked a turning point in the history of Christianity and the Roman Empire. In 313 CE, Constantine issued the Edict of Milan, which granted religious tolerance to Christians and allowed them to practice their faith openly. This edict ended centuries of persecution and laid the groundwork for Christianity to become the state religion. Constantine's conversion to Christianity and his patronage of the church had profound implications. He convened the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE to address theological disputes and establish a unified Christian doctrine. The Nicene Creed formulated at this council became a foundational statement of Christian faith. Under Constantine and his successors, except for Julian the Apostate, watch a video from his point of view for more details, the Roman state began to actively support the Christian church, providing it with resources and privileges. The construction of grand churches, such as the Basilica of St. Peter in Rome, symbolized the new status of Christianity within the empire. The process of Christianization continued under Emperor Theodosius I, 379 to 395 CE, who took even more decisive steps to make Christianity the official religion of the empire. Theodosius issued a series of edicts that effectively outlawed pagan practices and established Christianity as the state religion. In 380 CE, Theodosius issued the Edict of Thessalonica, which declared Nicene Christianity the official faith of the Roman Empire. He also convened the Second Council of Constantinople in 381 CE to reaffirm and expand upon the Nicene Creed. These actions solidified the dominance of Christianity and marginalized other religious traditions. The rise of Christianity was not without conflict and division. Theological disputes, such as the Arian controversy over the nature of Christ, led to significant tensions within the Christian community. These disputes sometimes erupted into violence and schisms, further complicating the religious landscape of the empire. Additionally, the imposition of Christianity as the state religion led to resistance from those who adhered to traditional pagan beliefs, this resistance manifested in various forms, from passive disobedience to active rebellion. The suppression of paganism and the destruction of pagan temples and rituals created deep cultural and social rifts. The religious transformation of the Roman Empire also involved a redefinition of Roman identity. The traditional Roman religion was deeply intertwined with the state's political and cultural institutions. The transition to Christianity required a reimagining of what it meant to be Roman. Christianity introduced new values and ethical frameworks that sometimes clashed with traditional Roman virtues. Concepts such as humility, charity, and the sanctity of life began to reshape social norms and behaviors. The Christian emphasis on the afterlife and spiritual salvation also shifted focus away from the temporal achievements and glories that had characterized Roman culture. The Christianization of the empire had significant implications for imperial authority. Emperors, who were previously seen as divine or semi-divine figures, now had to navigate their roles within the context of a monotheistic faith that recognized only one true God. The church emerged as a powerful institution that could challenge and influence imperial decisions. The relationship between the church and the state was complex and often fraught with tension. 
emperors sought to use Christianity to legitimize their rule and unify the empire, but they also had to contend with the church's growing influence and autonomy. This dynamic sometimes led to power struggles and conflicts over religious and political authority. The adoption of Christianity brought about significant social and cultural changes within the Roman Empire. Christian values promoted the care of the poor and sick, leading to the establishment of charitable institutions such as hospitals and orphanages. These institutions provided social support and helped to alleviate some of the hardships faced by the population. The Christianization of the empire also influenced art, literature, and architecture. Christian themes and symbols began to dominate artistic expression, and the construction of churches and basilicas became major architectural projects. The preservation and copying of classical texts by Christian monasteries also played a role in the transmission of Roman cultural heritage. The religious transformation of the Roman Empire had long-term consequences that extended beyond its fall. The establishment of Christianity as the state religion created a legacy that would shape the future of Europe and the Western world. The Christian Church became a central institution in medieval Europe preserving Roman traditions and serving as a bridge between the ancient and medieval worlds. However, the process of Christianization also contributed to the fragmentation and division of the Roman Empire. The theological disputes, cultural conflicts and power struggles that accompanied the rise of Christianity weakened the empire's cohesion and stability. The shift from a polytheistic society to a monotheistic one required profound adjustments that were not always smooth or successful. The religious transformation of the Roman Empire played a crucial role in its decline. The rise of Christianity, the imposition of new values, and the resulting conflicts and divisions all contributed to the empire's internal challenges. In the next part, we will explore the legacy of the Roman Empire and draw comparisons to modern states, including America, to understand how the lessons of Rome's decline can inform our present and future. The decline of the Roman Empire offers valuable lessons for modern nations, including the United States. While the historical and cultural context differ significantly, many of the challenges that contributed to Rome's fall resonate with contemporary issues faced by nations around the world. By examining the parallels, we can gain insights into the potential vulnerabilities and resilience of modern states. Modern states, especially superpowers like the United States, share some of the same challenges related to size and complexity that the Roman Empire faced. Managing a vast and diverse population along with extensive territories and global interests, constrained governmental structures and resources. The United States, with its federal system and numerous agencies, must navigate the complexities of governance, coordination, and accountability. Just as Rome struggled to maintain effective control over distant provinces, modern states grapple with the challenges of federalism and regionalism. Balancing the needs and interests of various states or regions within a single nation requires robust institutions and effective leadership. The potential for bureaucratic inefficiency and the risk of regional disparities remain significant concerns. The Roman Empire's military overextension provides a cautionary tale for modern states with global military commitments. The United States, with its extensive network of overseas bases and involvement in international conflicts, faces the challenge of maintaining a strong and sustainable military presence worldwide. The strain on military resources, personnel, and finances can lead to strategic vulnerabilities. Modern states must also contend with asymmetric warfare, cyber threats, and the complexities of coalition operations. Ensuring a balanced and adaptable defense strategy is crucial to avoiding the pitfalls of overextension and maintaining national security. Learning from Rome's experience, contemporary military planners emphasize the importance of agility, technological innovation, and strategic partnerships. Economic strain was a significant factor in the decline of the Roman Empire, and it remains a critical issue for modern states. The global financial system, characterized by interconnected markets and complex economic dynamics, presents both opportunities and risks. Economic crises, such as the Great Recession of 2008, and the roller coaster of an economy we've faced since the COVID pandemic highlight the vulnerability of even the most robust economies. The United States, as a leading economic power, must address challenges related to public debt, income inequality, and sustainable growth. Fiscal responsibility, prudent monetary policy, and investment in infrastructure and education are essential to maintaining long-term economic stability. Learning from Rome, modern states recognize the importance of economic resilience and the dangers of complacency. Political instability and corruption were central to Rome's decline, and they remain pertinent issues for modern states. The health of democratic institutions, the integrity of political processes, and the rule of law are crucial for effective governance. Political polarization, gridlock, 
and the erosion of public trust can undermine the stability and functionality of a nation. The United States, with its system of checks and balances, strives to safeguard democratic principles and prevent the concentration of power. However, the challenges of political partisanship, fake news, lobbying, and electoral integrity require continuous vigilance. Especially since the January 6th insurrection and further fights against democratic principles and institutions, including the Supreme Court. Ensuring transparent and accountable governance is essential to avoiding the pitfalls of Rome's political instability. The social and cultural decline that contributed to Rome's fall also has parallels in modern states. Issues such as social inequality, cultural fragmentation, and declining civic engagement can weaken the fabric of society. Modern states must promote inclusivity, social mobility, and a sense of shared identity to maintain cohesion and resilience. The United States, with its diverse population and dynamic culture, faces the challenge of fostering unity amidst diversity, addressing systemic inequalities, promoting social justice, and encouraging civic participation are critical to building a strong and cohesive society. Learning from Rome, modern states recognize the importance of cultural vitality and social solidarity. The Roman Empire faced significant external pressures from migrating tribes and emerging powers, and modern states must navigate a complex and evolving geopolitical landscape. Globalization, shifting alliances and the rise of new powers present both opportunities and challenges. The balance of power and the stability of international relations are central to national security. The United States, as a global leader, must manage its foreign policy with a keen awareness of historical lessons. Engaging in diplomacy, building strategic alliances, and addressing global challenges such as climate change and pandemics are essential to maintaining international stability. The experience of Rome underscores the importance of adaptability and proactive engagement in global affairs. The environmental and health issues that plagued Rome also resonate with contemporary concerns. Climate change, resource depletion, and public health crises, including the pandemic, pose significant threats to modern states. The ability to respond effectively to environmental challenges and health emergencies is crucial for national resilience. So far, you've done a terrible job on those fronts, only to our peril. The United States, as a major contributor to global carbon emissions and a leader in scientific research, has a critical role to play in addressing climate change and promoting sustainability. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the importance of robust public health systems and international cooperation. Learning from Rome, modern states recognize the need for proactive and coordinated responses to environmental and health challenges. External pressures from groups like the Huns and Arabs had a profound impact on the Roman Empire. The Huns, under the leadership of Attila, launched devastating raids into Roman territories in the 5th century. Their swift and brutal attacks contributed to the weakening of Roman defenses and the eventual collapse of the Western Roman Empire. Similarly, the rise of Arab forces in the 7th century reshaped the geopolitical landscape of the Eastern Roman Empire. The rapid expansion of the Arab Caliphates led to the loss of key territories, including the wealthy provinces of Egypt and Syria. These losses significantly weakened the Byzantine Empire, the eastern continuation of the Roman Empire. Modern states can draw parallels to the challenges posed by non-state actors and emergent powers in today's world. The importance of maintaining strong and adaptable defense systems, as well as engaging in effective diplomacy, is underscored by Rome's experiences with the Huns and Arabs. The decline of the Roman Empire offers a wealth of lessons for modern states. By understanding the multifaceted challenges that Rome faced, contemporary nations can better navigate their own complex environments. Key takeaways include 1. Effective governance. Maintaining strong, transparent, and accountable institutions is crucial for political stability and effective governance. 2. Sustainable economic policies, prudent fiscal management, investment in infrastructure and public education, and addressing income inequality are essential for long-term economic stability. 3. Social cohesion, promoting inclusivity, social justice, and civic engagement helps build a cohesive and resilient society. 4. Strategic defense, balancing military commitments and adapting to new threats are vital for national security. 5. Environmental stewardship, proactive responses to climate change and environmental challenges are necessary for sustainability. 6. Public health preparedness, robust public health systems and international cooperation are critical for addressing health crises. By learning from the rise and fall of Rome, modern states can strive to avoid similar pitfalls and build a more stable, resilient, and prosperous future. The legacy of the Roman Empire continues to inform and inspire, offering timeless lessons for the challenges of today and tomorrow. Thank you for watching.
my channel known as the Renaissance Spirit, is dedicated to the pursuits of a just, equitable, and humanitarian world. Video topics encompass areas including history, politics, religion, personal development, society, culture, social and environmental justice and other topics of liberal arts and sciences including ancient Roman and the Roman Empire, which is a great comparison and contrast of the modern world. Topics perfect for the true modern polymath. The Renaissance ushered in a golden age and the pursuit of knowledge, knowledge both lost to time and yet to be discovered. It gave birth to the enlightenment and the age of reason. Embracing truth, knowledge, and an understanding and compassion for humanity and our shared history opens up the world to each of us individually and improves all of humanity, affording us the opportunity to be better stewards of the earth and to each other. The Renaissance spirit, more than just a philosophy or style, but a style for living, learning, growing, and thinking. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and share. If you're looking to explore and experience what life has to offer, I'm sure you'll enjoy the other videos on my channel. Please peruse, and let me know in the comments what you get out of them and what other videos you'd like to see. But first, please take the quiz next to see if you're a Renaissance spirit. With the Renaissance spirit.